All right, all right. Uh, how's everybody doing now? Dave here. This video is about color theory, but it's not going to be your typical color theory video. I'm kind of imparting a little bit of knowledge here that maybe you're not aware of about color theory. A few little insights. First of all, this is your color wheel. Everybody can see that. This is the front of the color wheel, and this is the back of the color wheel. Basically what this tells you, see, is your three primaries, yellow, red, and blue. And the front of the color wheel basically tells you that if you add one color, you, as you turn this and you add a color to that, you see the color that you get, and also if you add white, but the back of the color wheel is a little more involved. This shows that uh, each color, if you add white, you get a tint. If you add gray, you get a tone. And if you add black, you get a shade. Now also you can get tones by intermixing colors, but basically if you add a gray to a color of the equal value, which we'll get into on down the way. But these are color, uh, color schemes also, which we will we'll delve into that on down the way. But everybody should get a color wheel. This is very important when you're in the beginning. After a while, you may not need it, but it comes in handy when you're learning. Now, what we're gonna do, I'll put this aside for just a minute. And uh, I will do my, uh, my color wheel. Now, also, uh, actually using the color wheel, I usually like to hold it where yellow is at the top, red's over here, and blue, they're about uh, 120 degrees apart. A circle is 360 degrees, they're about 120 degrees apart. So we would have yellow up here, Red about here and blue about over here. Now these are primaries. Yellow, red, and blue are primaries. If you mix yellow and red, you get orange. You mix red and blue, you get violet. If you mix yellow and blue, you get a green. Those colors are secondaries. Now, we've got one more group of colors. If we mix yellow and orange, we get a yellow orange. Coming around this way, if we mix red and orange, we get a red, orange. If we mix red and violet, we get a red, violet. Violet and blue, we'll get a blue, violet. Blue and green, we'll get a blue, green. And yellow and green, we get a yellow and yellow green that group and the last group is called tertiaries so you've got primaries they're mixtures you get secondaries and in between we have tertiaries so all together you have 12 different positions on the color wheel and one other thing about the color wheel if we draw a line from here Right across, this part of the color wheel is warm, and 
this part is cool. And if we mixed all the colors together, in the center you get a neutral. Depending on how much of a color, which way you want it to go, this neutral could be warm or it could be cool, depending on the color mixtures. That's just the basics. Now we're going to get a little deeper. Primaries. As I just told you, there are three primaries, red, yellow, and blue. But there are more than one red, more, more than one yellow, and more than one blue. Now, for just the sake of uh, simplicity, I'm going to list five in each category. These are the main ones that I use in my paintings. So, for instance, yellow. You'll have five different yellows. So we'll say over here, yellow. Now our first yellow, we're gonna do it in descending order from the lightest value down to the darkest. Just five different uh, colors in each uh, section. For yellow, we will have lemon yellow. Our next yellow would be cadmium yellow. Our third yellow will be cadmium yellow deep. Our fourth yellow, Indian yellow. Our fifth yellow would be yellow ochre. Let's see. Now that will comprise our first group of yellow primaries. Now we'll go to red. Our first red would be cadmium, red, light. Our second red would simply be cadmium, red. Number three, cadmium, red, deep. Number four would be Alzerian Crimson. And our fifth red would be Magenta. And finally, we'll go to our blues. First blue, cerulean. Number two, cobalt. Number three, ultramarine. Four, phthalo, and number five would be Prussian.
Now these are just the 15 that I basically use. I've kind of gravitated to these, of course. There are many more you can put in each category. But with just these 15, if you actually interchange any one of these in the color wheel, which I've, I've done here on my sheet, I've actually got 124 different color wheels. So basically what I've done, see if I have the color wheel, and for all practical purposes, I use the, we'll say we use a, a cadmium red, and we use a phthalo blue, Now for color wheel number one, maybe we would use lemon yellow. In a moment I'll show you the matrixes, how we mix these colors together. Now, this is, you, once you have all these mixtures, you, you do your main mixtures and you, you add white for your tints and uh, mainly just black for your shades. That would be one color wheel. Then we would just simply keep our red and our blues the same, and we would put use cadmium yellow. We would do all our mixtures. And once uh, we've done all our mixtures with those, as you see, we go down to the next one, cadmium yellow deep. Indian yellow, then yellow ochre. And after we exhaust all those, then we'll keep a yellow and maybe the blue and we'll start changing the reds. And we go through like that till we get 124 actual uh, color wheels. And from that, it's just infinite, the number of color combinations. Now remember, this is very subjective, the colors that I've chosen. You may choose something a little different. Now, what we're going to do here is give you an idea how you set up a matrix. We're just going to use the primaries initially. So, on this particular color wheel, This particular color wheel, see we're using cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and phthalo blue. Now the idea with just these three primaries plus white and black, that's five tubes of paint. We're gonna see all the mixtures we can have. So you will mix, you will have the yellow and the red as a mixture. You'll have the red and the blue as a mixture. And we'll have the yellow and the blue as a mixture. And we will add white for tints and black for shades. I'm gonna, a lot of these uh, ideas like this, I will do a schematic first. Now here's our, our first matrix on, on this. You will take, basically that was a nine, if you've been involved with art a little bit, you know about the nine step value scale, where even with a pencil, any medium you have, we've narrowed it down to, they've been narrowed down to nine steps, value steps from dark to light, it's nine steps. But for this uh, actual, uh, how should we say, uh, demonstrations in, in my classes that I offer, I've narrowed it down to just five to make it real simple. You want two steps to go up in value, uh, value and two steps to go down in value plus the mixtures. So this is how we graph. Our 
I'll say this to be one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four. Now you place, we're going to start out with red. You will place red right here. Okay, me and red. In that position. You want two spaces above it and two spaces below it. Over here. We'll do cadmium yellow. Now the idea is to mix the red and the yellow together, right across horizontally. Of course, that mixture in there should be a good orange. You have more of a red orange here and a yellow orange over there. Then. Once you've got these mixtures, you take each step and you add white. Plus white. Plus white. And these, these values up here I'd call tips. Those are the lighter values. Once you've painted those in, you will add black. Plus black. Plus black. And you will have shades. That's our first matrix. We've used two primaries. We've used red and yellow. In particular, we've used cadmium red and cadmium yellow. And here's our second matrix. We're going five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Cross two, three, four. I'm gonna say five right there. Now on the second matrix, we'll still stay with cadmium red. But over here, we will use a little blue. And the same thing, we add the red, we mix the red and the blue together. Of course, in here we will get, depending on how even you mix the, uh, the colors, and sometimes it's not 50-50. Of course, phthalo blue is a very strong color, so you will need, let's say, more red. It won't be a 50-50 mix. Then, once we have those tones horizontally, we will add white. Plus white. And get our tints. You will go up two steps. And then we go down two steps. Plus black. Add black to cadmium red in two steps. Add black to phthalo blue in two steps. And we have some more shades. That's our second matrix. Now, we've got one more. 
Number three. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and five. Now this time, we will over here, we will use, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Cadmium yellow. And phthalo blue. And we do the same thing. We'll add the cadmium yellow phthalo blue together in the middle for our horizontal mixers. Then we'll go up, we'll add white to each and get our tints. We get our tints. Now we will add black each and we have our shades from this diagram I've diagrammed your mixtures now this is how you actually set up the chart this is one of my classes what I've actually done this is actually a little, a little heavier duty than a regular uh, uh, canvas pad. It's called canva, it's called canva paper. This happens to be a 24 by 18 sheet. Uh, these are the actual matrix, matrices, uh, matrices that I've actually uh, done. Now, to give you an idea, uh, these are actually five inches across by five inches down. So each square is one inch square. And I've actually got about two and a half inches between each matrix. And here I've got designated cadmium red, cadmium yellow, then cadmium red and phthalo blue, then phthalo blue and cadmium yellow as far as uh, these mixtures. Now we'll we'll worry about the uh, complements later on another video, but right now we're just dealing with the primaries. This is how you set it up. I've got two and a half inches from the top to this border around here. That's two and a half inches, and each border all around the borders is one inch. Uh, the actual letters that I started here, they're about maybe an inch and a half high. And I did about maybe five and a half inches from the uh, from the from the edge to here. The border is one inch, so it's pretty easy to set up. And I've done it with pencil first, make my, all my design with pencil, and then I went over it with a uh, mag with a regular marker. And this is how you set up the matrix. Now, once you set it up. As you remember, we've got uh, cadmium red and yellow. This is the diagram, and this is one that's been painted. This is all for study. So you can see the mixtures of not only mixed when as a beginner, the mixtures, how the mixtures look, and how you actually control the brush. Brush control, how much paint to use, when you mix in with the palette knife, all this is part of, of, of painting, especially in the beginning how to stay actually within these lines and to make it a nice opaque layer. Now here, as you can see, I've got my cadmium red right here and my cadmium yellow. I mixed the two. I went up with white, two spaces, and I went down. Now, 
you see, you really see a lot of uh, difference in the in the uh, tints. But sometimes when we get to the actual shades, they may be pretty dark. You can't really tell. But there's a technique on down the way. I'll show you how we can you can actually see what these shades are. But if you'll notice, you control the value of the shades. These shades are not as dark. You see more color in these shades than the shades over here. They're, they're a lot darker. More black was used. It all depends. Everything is very subjective. And here I use the cadmium red again in the, in the middle position. Thalo blue over here. I mixed the two. Then I went up with white and down with black. Over here, that's the phthalo blue is in the, in the main position. That's, that's pure, unsaturated color. Phthalo blue and the yellow, up with tints and, and down with black for the shades. And this is how it would look, how a finished matrix should look. And these, these are just uh, three particular primaries, as I showed you earlier. Cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and phthalo blue. Now, in each matrix, You've got actually 25 different tints and uh, shades, and you can. I, I, I sometimes I call these tones, where you've mixed the two. When we get into complements, you really see a difference when we mix a color and its complement. It will go toward a neutral, a neutral tone. So I like to call these the tones right here on the horizontal plane. These are the tints, and these are the shades. Now in each matrix, we've got 25 colors. So all together. With each one, with each one being exactly 25 different tints and tones and shades, you've got 25 here, 25 here, and 25 here. You got five tints across, and five, uh, I should say different colors, because these are shades down here. All together, with just these three tubes of paint plus black and white, you actually have 75 tints, tones, and shades. With just these three. Now sometimes when you, when you have, if you had nine steps each way, that would be 81, 81 per matrix. But it would take up much more space and you get the general idea. The idea here is each uh, step that you take, you should see a change in the value. It should get lighter as we go up and each step should get darker. The next one should be different than the one uh, either below it or above it. That, that's the whole idea behind this. If you had nine steps up and nine steps across, like I said, that would be 81. They would get real subtle in their changes. But still, each one of the, these squares is technically a different color. No two should be exactly alike. And on down the way, we, I'll actually show you how to, we put these together and do a painting. Now one of the last things in this video I'll leave you with just to give you something to think about to my next video. On the back of the color wheel, we've got six color schemes. Now, a color scheme is a combination of colors that harmonize automatically. Uh, when you're painting, once you pre-mix your palette, that's, that's a, something else we'll go through. Once you pre-mix these uh, color schemes, each color scheme, once you pre-mix, you have all your colors and all you do is, is paint. You don't have to worry about what's, uh, what's going to harmonize or, or not be uh, in harmony with the other colors. So uh, we've got the six color schemes, and I'll just list these here. In my next video, we will go into one. one. First, uh, we'll say color schemes. Now 
You know, your first color scheme. It's monochromatic. That's where you use one color, plus white and black. The next color scheme is analogous. An analogous color scheme are colors that relate to each other, that are adjacent to each other. Uh, you do three to five colors. The colors have to be adjacent to each other. No uh, less than three, no more than five. The third color scheme is complimentary. complimentary. Now, a complementary color scheme is any color exactly across the color wheel from it, from a particular color. See, in this instance, if we have our, our uh, primaries, the color that's right across from yellow, the complement is violet. The complement of the other primary red, the color straight across the color wheel is green. And blue, the color straight across the color wheel is orange. That's complements. Number four, split complement. almost the same as the complementary, except, say with yellow, instead of doing violet, we keep yellow as our main color, but we go blue-violet and red-violet. We take the colors on either side of the complement. The fifth color scheme is a triadic. Triadic is any three colors. Uh, the main primaries are a triadic color scheme, red, yellow, and blue. A lot of these would be diagrammed down the way. I'm just listing them right now. But a triadic is any three colors around the color wheel, equal de degrees apart. And the last is called a tetradic, T. Tet. Tetradic, it's a little bit hard to explain that, but it's like four, it's four corners. It's four, usually four colors, and they, there are a few different, if you can imagine either a rectangle or a square imposed on this. This is something that, right, it's the most complicated one. We'll get into that one on down the way, but I just want to list them right now, and eventually I'll be showing you schematics, and we're gonna do matrices on each one, and we'll start out, and then I'll show you some of the paintings. Uh, the actual, uh, how should we say, the matrices of each one. And how we arrive at, at the uh, color combinations. But right now, that's it to next time. And it's something for you to think about. So until next time, uh, stay tuned and we'll delve a little more into this color theory. Maybe it's something that uh, will give you some ideas and broaden your sense of color. Stay tuned.